NASCAR hopes to announce the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series schedule this month. Here's a few things that are likely going to happen. Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic is obsessed with figuring out what next year's schedule is going to be every single year, and we thank him for that because I think we all love to know if there's going to be any sort of schedule changes. Instead of just the copy and paste schedule that we had basically from 2001 all the way up until essentially 2019-2020, the last few schedules have included a number of different changes, and 2025 will be no different. The biggest change that's going to be on the schedule? Well, it's going to be Viva La Mexico because NASCAR will be headed to Mexico City in 2025 by the sounds of it. Uh, an agreement hasn't been, you know, signed or anything yet, but it does it seem increasingly likely that NASCAR will have to CW McCall their way across Mexico, convoy their way there, gets Toretto to offer them safe passing, maybe. The actual Toretto, not that fake one on TikTok. The, the inflated one. I think that might be the best way to describe it. But NASCAR will be racing at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, the same place that the Xfinity Series raced at from 2000 2005 until 2008 they of course have added a stadium section which used to be a baseball stadium there at the same place formula one races at so if you have watched the race from there you know what the stadium section looks like for the cup cars it'll be interesting because i think like what we've seen with formula e and formula one that stadium section can be changed around and reconfigured and i think nascar could benefit from a different configuration than what formula one runs through there other than that it's going to be a massive market gain for NASCAR, their first international race since 1958, which is something that they desperately have wanted to do. And at the end of the day, Mexico City is closer to Charlotte, North Carolina than Los Angeles is, just like I said. You might have to convoy your way down there. Hopefully Daniel Suarez has a ride next year, whether that's at Trackhouse or somewhere else, he'll be an absolute fan favorite. And if he's not there, they're still going to show out in droves because it's something new. It's something people want to experience. And the Xfinity Series races there between 05 and 08 were phenomenal. Mexico's race will come from Richmond. Richmond will lose its spring date. That will go to the Mexico City race. The only person that might not be happy about this is probably Kyle Busch. He might have uh, sweaty palms right now. Maybe have to ask NASCAR for a waiver. Although I think he maybe took care of his Mexico issues uh, through his pocketbook. Either way, <laughs> it would be a funny storyline. Other things that were on the table for discussion in Jordan Bianchi's article on The Athletic, go read it if you haven't done that, is the topic of The Clash. Now we know that The Clash will not return to the LA Coliseum in 2025 for its fourth edition um, inside that famed venue. NASCAR proved its point, but they lost a lot of money in the process doing that. And they are looking at other avenues in Southern California, which we'll talk about in a second. So where's The Clash going to go? Well, there, according to Jordan, is the possibility of a holdover year in Daytona. A lot of drivers have asked for that. A lot of fans have asked for that. Doesn't appear that it's going to happen. The likely landing spot or possible landing spot is Bowman Gray Stadium. A lot like Mike Joy alluded to during Sunday's broadcast from Kansas, it appears that NASCAR, having taken over operations at Bowman Gray, could possibly put the clash there in 2025. Again, kind of like I mentioned the other day in a video, it's cold in Winston-Salem at the beginning of February. And I know a lot of people are like, why is everyone talk about how cold it's going to be? Well, because getting fans to come out is going to be difficult. However, getting fans to come out to a racetrack like Bowman Gray Stadium, 17,000 people, is not actually going to be that difficult. People want to come out and see this. Doing the clash at night, though, at Bowman Gray Stadium? Ooh, it's cold during the day. It's going to be colder at night. So I think that might be the only deterrent there. But it definitely seems like Bowman Gray is on the table. Will we get the WWE antics that we're so used to from Bowman Gray Stadium? Is Kyle Busch going to drive across the infield and T-bone? You know, whoever he thinks has wronged him, I doubt it because Kyle Busch is a lot more level-headed now. But who knows? You put people in a bullring, a quarter-mile bullring at that, wild things might happen. So at the end of the day, the clash could possibly be headed there, could be headed back to Daytona. Speaking of Daytona, that will be the regular season finale once again in 2025. Obviously, the Olympic year in 2024 has kind of messed that up. And then outside of that... With that having the regular season finale, talking about other potential off weeks or schedule changes that we've seen this year versus next year, Easter weekend will be an off weekend for the NASCAR Cup Series, I assume all NASCAR Series, so everybody can stop complaining about wanting to take uh, advantage of a great TV ratings night and enjoy chasing Easter eggs with their kids or hunting them or whatever you do with children. 
Another topic that came up is the discussion of the championship race and whether it'll be back at Phoenix or at Homestead. So we've seen four, soon to be five editions of the championship race at Phoenix, and I hope you're ready for a sixth one because it sounds like it's going back there in 2025, much to the anger of every single person with eyeballs, except for the people of Phoenix. And the reason they're not taking it out of Phoenix, too many people buy tickets. The people of Phoenix are suffering Stockholm Syndrome and NASCAR is their captors at this point. NASCAR has convinced these people that this is a good racetrack and good racing. Meanwhile, everybody outside of it is looking at them like they're just suffering from heat exhaustion and they're delusional at this point because everybody, like I said, with eyes, even if you don't have eyes, I bet with ears, you probably even know that this race absolutely stinks. It is not a good track for especially the Gen 7 Cup car. Now, maybe will a softer tire, if that's what they're able to get out of it, make the racing better? Probably. But like Jamie McMurray said, there hasn't been a good race at Phoenix in the better part of 20 years. Honestly, when's the last time you left a Phoenix race going, that was a pretty good race? I mean, I'll tell you this, I've seen every Phoenix race since 2001. Not once have I ever walked out of Phoenix being like, ah, yeah, that was actually a pretty good race. There was one time, kind of one time, back before the reconfiguration where guys were running that top line through what would have at that point been three and four, now one and two, and it was somewhat interesting. Other than that, I'm pretty sure Michael Waltrip was in contention for that race. Actually, I know he was because I believe he finished second that night. And I was like, is Michael Waltrip about to get a non-restrictor plate track win? Nope, never did, but in the Cup Series at least. So for all the hope that we had of going back to Homestead or going literally anywhere that wasn't Phoenix, all been dashed. They're going back to Phoenix because too many people buy tickets. Buy tickets to Homestead. Stop buying tickets to Phoenix. Phoenix is not fun. It's not a fun racetrack. Having said that, maybe I'll be at the Phoenix finale this year and I can determine for myself if it's a good race or not. But on TV, not a very good race. I think much to everyone's dismay, that is going to happen again in 2026. On the other hand, the topic of Canada came up again. And as much as we all want to visit our friends in the great north and see Leroy and Leroy and sing that wonderful national anthem, Oh, Canada, our home and native land, we pledge allegiance to Stuart Freeze and one nation under maple syrup and something about liberties and sometimes you have freedom there. Whatever. You know the whole song. Yeah, It doesn't seem like it's going to happen. 50-50 shot of going to Montreal seems to be on the table. And honestly, if they're taking away an oval, adding Mexico City, adding another road course, especially with how poorly the road course package has currently been racing, not something I think anybody really wants. So if Montreal doesn't make the schedule, I don't think anybody's going to lose sleep over that, especially if Mexico's being added. At the same time, of course, NASCAR wants to get to Mexico. Montreal is a major market that they would love to be in, uh, even though it's, what, practice France at this point. It still is a famed racetrack and a market and a country that they obviously want to tap because they have the Pinty Series. They have... Stuart Freeze, and they have a couple other, you know, initiatives that they would like to have in Canada, and having the Cup Series there would be would be massive. Just does not seem like it's going to happen in 2025. It could, but probably not. So yeah, that's the majority of what Jordan Bianchi talked about in his article on the Athletic. He also mentioned that Coda is expected to be back on the schedule next year as well. Of course, that is SMI leasing the track from. Uh, Bobby Epstein and, and the people at Circuit of the Americas to put on that race as its promoter. He said that he fully expects them to be back for year five. Uh, again, Coda is one of those tracks I could do with or without on the NASCAR Cup Series schedule. I don't think that it produces that great of racing. The racing there isn't exactly stellar, but at the same time, it is probably the premier you know, road course facility in the United States. It's an FIA grade one facility going there, having a presence in Austin an up and coming booming city, uh, regardless if it's soulless or not at this point is a place that NASCAR wants to be, especially as Texas has continued to struggle, obviously at Texas Motor Speedway when I refer to Texas there. So yeah, that appears to be what's happening on the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series schedule. If NASCAR does announce it this month, I think everybody in the industry would be absolutely ecstatic and we won't have to listen to the guys over at dbc complain about the schedule not being out until you know august october november whenever it came out last year because that certainly didn't get old after the 18th episode in a row that they talked about it so let me know in the comments what you think about the schedule potential schedule changes what you'd like to see like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog